I did something dumb. I know, I know, me, Dustin, the video tour guide, made an oopsie. If you watch one of my videos where I compare HLG with Vlog on the S1H, you'll notice that when I'm comparing the two, there's actually a big difference between them. I had a short conversation with somebody who is much smarter than me when it comes to HLG, and it made me realize that I have a lot to learn and that I need to make a follow-up video. I feel like too, HLG is kind of like this newer thing that kind of popped up out of nowhere and there's not a lot of information out there, or at least it's really hard to find. And nobody has really gone in depth when it comes to HLG and what it is essentially. One thing that I do need to say, and it's about the title that I made up of myself for this channel, that being your video tour guide. Yes, it is catchy and it's something that I made up, but it is something that I take very seriously. I put an extremely high value on the trust that you guys give me in these videos when I'm talking about these topics and explaining them as accurately as possible. So that is why today we are gonna dive deep into HLG and hopefully you'll walk away knowing essentially everything you need to know when it comes to HLG. Then at the end of the video, I'm gonna go back and compare my footage that I had in my HLG and Vlog comparison video, and then you can kind of see what I did that is essentially incorrect way of comparing the two and see what kind of a difference that it makes. The one thing about that video though that I was right is Vlog and HLG are different tools for different needs, and it is up to you to make the decision what tool fits your needs better. Oh, and one more thing, now that I have a little bit better understanding of HLG, I decided to refine not only my HLG LUT, but also my Vlog LUT, and I'll show an example of what those LUTs do towards the end of the video. You probably know by now, but if you don't, my name is Dustin, your video tour guide, and please keep your arms and legs inside your chairs at all times. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Like I mentioned, HLG seems to be kind of this secret that not a lot of people know about or want to talk about because they don't want to reveal their secrets. There are videos out there that talk about HLG that are totally correct, but they just leave out a lot of information that there is about it, in my opinion. The first thing we need to talk about when it comes to HLG is HDR and SDR. HDR, you probably know, stands for high dynamic range, and SDR stands for standard dynamic range. Now, I wanna clear up some confusion, if you have it, that even I had when I hear the word HDR. In photos, HDR is typically taking three differently exposed images or more, and merging them together so you can achieve more dynamic range in the image when comparing your brightest parts of the image and your darkest parts of the image. If you work with RED cameras, there's also something similar you can do called HDRX, which this is specific to RED cameras, but what it'll do is take two exposures that you record at the same time and merge them together, giving you more dynamic range. HDR is actually much different in terms of video. An HDR video that is being displayed on an HDR TV will give the appearance of being much brighter and vibrant than an SDR image because of how much brighter and much more contrast an HDR TV can achieve. This creates much more separation or contrast between the highlights and the shadows of the image. On top of that, HDR and SDR also work in a different color gamut and color depth or bit depth. I'll get into what the difference is between these as well, but this is where the term Rec 709 comes from, which is the color gamut that SDR video uses. The color gamut that HDR uses is Rec 2020 or Rec 2100. One reason why information on HLG and HDR is hard to come by and you have to do a lot of digging on the internet is because SDR and Rec 709 is technically still the standard when it comes to finalizing your video. HDR is becoming much more common though on TVs and will eventually probably become the standard. Think of it like high definition video and ultra high definition video. UHD is becoming more common in the market as well as UHD TVs and displays 
but HD is still the standard. So what makes a monitor or TV HDR? It really comes down to nits, which is just a fancy word for luminance or the amount of brightness that a display is able to achieve of visible light. The higher the nits, the brighter that the display can be. SDR displays are only able to achieve about 100 nits of peak brightness, whereas an HDR display is able to go up to 300, 400, even 4,000 nits of peak brightness. There are two other things that separate an SDR display and an HDR display, and they are the color gamut and bit depth. Color gamut basically refers to the palette of colors that the TV is able to display in terms of saturation. If you have a wider color gamut, the display is able to show more saturation and vibrance between the different colors. Bit depth also refers to colors, but more in terms of number of colors that display is able to show within that color palette. The biggest thing that bit depth affects is gradients. 8-bit displays only have 256 shades of red, green, and blue, whereas a 10-bit display will have 1,024 shades of red, green, and blue. The higher the bit depth, the less likely you are prone to have banding in the image. I am simplifying things, but hopefully you are getting the gist of it. Now that we know what makes a display HDR, how do we record HDR video? Well, the first thing is to record in the highest bit depth possible. As you probably understand now, it is highly recommended to record in at least 10 bits because if you record in 8 bits, sure, you can still finalize your video for HDR in 8 bit, but you are most likely going to have banding because there's just not enough information in the video. This is where log profiles come into play as well. The flat, ugly log picture profiles are how the camera is able to achieve a higher dynamic range. Now, once you record with both these in mind, you are going to need an HDR monitor because in order to grade the footage to look good on an HDR display, you have to display it on an HDR monitor. Remember the nits of peak brightness I talked about? This is why you need an HDR monitor because if your monitor can't achieve the nits of peak brightness, you can't finalize your video to look good on an HDR display. There are also different formats when it comes to HDR and they are Dolby Vision, HDR10+, Plus, and HDR10. Now I didn't look a ton into these, but from my understanding, the important part about these formats is the metadata. Metadata is basically just extra information that is sent with a video signal that tells the display or a monitor how to show the video correctly which is why these formats typically will require two different signals, one that is only compatible with HDR displays and one that is compatible with SDR displays. In my research, it also seems that companies have to pay in order to get something certified as a Dolby Vision display. And there is a proper way to master the video for this format, whereas HDR10 and HDR10 Plus do not require this certification, but it still uses the same signal with HDR displays, which requires another signal for SDR displays. Now, finally, this is where HLG or hybrid log gamma comes into play. HLG is an HDR format that was developed in order to simplify this process. In basic terms, at the lower half of the signal value of HLG, it uses the conventional SDR gamma curve. But at the upper half of the signal value, it uses a logarithmic curve, which increases the dynamic range. This makes HLG compatible with HDR displays and SDR displays, and it only requires one signal instead of two because it doesn't rely on the metadata that the other formats require. This is why it is called hybrid because it is compatible with both formats. One other thing is HLG is typically only used in live broadcasting. You can see where this can be really useful in a live broadcast setting because it greatly simplifies things when you are sending one signal instead of two. All right, now that is a very dumbed down explanation of HLG and HDR, but hopefully that helps you understand why it exists and what it is used for. So back to the difference between HLG and V-Log. Well, if I was smart and just did more research, I would have better explained HLG is still another log format like V-Log, C-Log, S-Log, in other log formats. So if I use a Rec. 709 color gamut to compare them, then I need to use the same color gamut to compare the two correctly. This is where I fell short on the last video because I just didn't try hard enough to find the proper conversion because there aren't a lot of places you can find out how to convert HLG to a Rec. 709 color space. 
I believe I finally found a way to convert it automatically using DaVinci Resolve. But with that, it seems that it requires either the licensed version of DaVinci Resolve or an HDR monitor. I also forgot to mention that HDR monitors are mega expensive right now. So unless you need to master your videos in HDR, there really isn't a reason to fork out thousands of dollars for an HDR monitor. So I haven't been able to test this method, but here are the steps. Once you have imported your HLG footage to Resolve, go to settings and then color management. Now set the input color space to rec to 100 and then the timeline color space and output color space to rec 709 gamma 2.4. Like I said, I wasn't able to test this for myself, but it does, it sounds correct. If you know more information on this, comment below. The other option is to find a LUT that will do the conversion for you. There's a link in the description to the Leaming LUT Pro that has a rec 709 conversion for HLG, Vlog, and Cine D on the Panasonic S-Series cameras, as well as a bunch of others. Now, let's compare Vlog to HLG the proper way in a Rec. 709 color space. You'll notice as I compare the two side by side, there won't be a very big difference between the two when it comes to color. The biggest difference that I see between them is how they recover the shadowy parts of the image. Now, a lot of these shots I probably didn't expose properly. When you are exposing long footage using a histogram, you should probably expose to the right. Basically what this means is you are exposing as bright as possible before your highlights clip. The reason that I didn't expose this way on all of my shots is because I wanted to maintain detail in the sky or my highlights. And then when I balanced my exposure on these shots in post, I'm having to bring up my shadows, which introduces more stops of noise. As you can see though, Vlog seems to do a better job at raising the shadows and maintaining color accuracy as opposed to HLG. In terms of color though, there essentially is no difference. Like you can see in this last shot, both red lights are very similar, where in the previous video comparison, HLG was much more orange, and that's because it's a log format, it was just more flat. Now, we can come to the conclusion, it really is up to you what picture profile is best for you, depending on what your needs are. The important part is to properly convert the footage into the color gamut you are finalizing your video and making the creative tweaks from there. But then again, guys, I am one that doesn't like to follow the rules. I treat picture profiles the same way that I would treat any tool on the camera. It is up to me to make the decision on how I use it and utilize it, even though that I am breaking the rule on how I'm supposed to use it. I mentioned before that I've created two new LUTs for HLG and Vlog. These ones are not gonna be free though, so I'm sorry, but don't worry, I'm still thinking of you guys. If you use the code YT500, you can save $5 on each. There may even be a little surprise that I have included with my new Vlog and HLG LUTs. Keep in mind, when you are exposing and planning to use my two new LUTs for Vlog and HLG, you will want to expose as bright as possible before the highlights clip. I'm also going to include in the description another place where you can purchase Vlog and HLG LUTs that were created by one of our very own subscribers, Dennis. And Dennis was actually the one that I talked to about HLG. And so I have to say thank you, Dennis, for basically just making me realize I needed to do a better job at doing my job, I guess. Is this my job? It's my job now. And with that, I don't know about you guys, but it seems to be pretty hard to find Panasonic S-Series LUTs at this time. Remember, all the information regarding LUTs are in the description. And if you want to support the channel, be sure to consider checking them out. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a double thumbs up. And don't worry, I've got plenty more videos in the works, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button if you want to be notified when I upload those videos. In the meantime, though, happy filming. My channel is just Dustin Armstrong if you want to look it up. Yeah, Dustin Armstrong. YouTube.com slash Dustin Armstrong Pro. Somebody took Dustin Armstrong. So. Oh, really? Okay. Dustin so Armstrong, the Pro stands for Productions. Yeah, nice to meet you. Good luck.